um so just now on your own journey mm-hmm. um so the um so the initial period has been you know you are in this you're heading um you're heading the uh, you're heading this particular unit mm-hmm. um you're bringing in you've gone through you, that journey yourself um at what point do you uh, you've diversified you've grown the portfolio and then at what point do you morph into mm. into something different? <laughs> into something different yeah uh, i think that's what, that was that's what i was saying about young institutions yeah so when i joined the PHLC, i think they were in the second strategic plan period right. right and that strategic plan period had defined how the research portfolio should be organized so previously when i joined it was everything was linear so there was a executive director director of research senior researchers and then everyone else and it was such a like a vertical system i remember even the executive director used to review abstracts for conferences and proposals every single proposal that went out um, was was being reviewed because it was a very small you know vertical structure now i i a few years after we came the the strategic plan had stipulated that the research portfolio should be organized differently. When I came, everything was about urban. We have done a lot of work on slums and urban health and all that. Everything was urban. So now the plan had said we should split education research, health research, urbanization and well-being becomes it's something independent of everything else. And then there were some two other themes which were included in the strategic plan. So the strategic plan was being operationalized. And the operationalization was getting the portfolio that existed and then grouping things. Do they, are they health projects? Are they education projects? Are they urbanization projects? And since I had a portfolio which was focused on non-communicable diseases, almost all the health work was the portfolio I was leading. So I became the head of the health team. Mm. Just like that. Mm. I think it was 2008. Mm. I'd just finished my... I had just been fast tracked outside, mm. out of the postdoc. Mm. So I, I was an associate research scientist, mm. early career researcher, mm. and then I became the head of the health team. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, which was interesting. Quick. Uh, very quick, very yeah. quick. Yeah. But also, I think maybe it's the, 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 that, that's how I set, I set up on the path really for research leadership. Yeah. Because it stopped being more about me and more about the team. The team. Yeah. and the theme mm. and um, as a as a theme leader i was i became part of senior management mm. so now you operate in a different sphere you go for senior management teams mm. you hear things like burn rate you hear things <laughs> like um unrestricted funding you're like oh my god what is this mm. you you hear about the board and policies so you get exposed to so many other things mm. beyond me being a great researcher in non communicable mm. diseases mm. I started getting exposed to other mm. aspects of the institution, management and leadership, especially yeah. management and leadership and governance and governance exactly. Mm. So, mm. Um, so I became a theme leader mm. um, very early mm. in, in the career. Mm. But then the theme leadership itself, I had a very small team when I started. Mm. Um, all of them, um, I don't think I had anyone who had a PhD in mm. my team. Mm. But then you get more grants mm. and then uh, bring you, you bring in more people. So mm. I got a postdoc here and mm. a postdoc there. Mm. Uh, the people that I was supervising mm. now wait for their own PhDs. They mm. finished, they came back. So mm. over time, the team starts growing. Mm. But then parallel to that, mm. I'm also growing as a leader mm. because I think in the theme itself, mm. um, you innovate around how to do things. Mm. And then you find that those innovations now become useful mm. for the organization. Mm. And so you people start seeing you not just as a theme leader, but mm. as a leader within mm. the institution because mm of the way you managed your project or the way you, mm. you introduced something about, mm. um, you know, different things. I can give examples. Mm. I introduced performance-based uh, payments mm. for field teams. Oh, okay. So set up a whole system of computing outputs mm. and then paying based on outputs. Not that you spend six months in the field and we pay you, even yeah. though you collected 10 questionnaires and somebody did a hundred of them, mm. you get paid because you've spent six months. Yeah. So I introduced performance-based payment during my project. There must have been uh, resistance. Uh, I don't. Bad. I think when people realized the value, there was actually not much. Okay. All so right. now it's almost like mainstream. Mm. We do performance-based mm. um, 
we mm. try to make sure mm. everybody does what they're supposed to do mm. but then if somebody really is clearly mm. behind everyone mm. else you don't pay them it's a good the same incenti- amount. incentivization that, yeah. yeah and that was like really my very first grant mm. after the fellowship i got from welcome trust i, mm. I introduced performance based mm. no payment mm. so there are those things yeah mm. figuring out ways of tracking field mm. work performance and mm. and doing that but i think it's almost like um there are there are times in my career when i felt like i have to give up something mm. <laughs> because if i give up if i don't give up this then mm. something maybe bigger cannot happen mm. i had i gave up my clinical practice oh even as i came back after there are times when i said my goodness i went to school for what 18 years and <laughs> i'm not a doctor mm. and maybe I'll, maybe I'll, i'll get some locum somewhere maybe i'll mm. volunteer mm. it chewed me up until i said you know what give it up mm. the medical training i received helps me to do so many other things mm. i understand the world yeah. differently because i have mm. medical background so mm. there's value i'm not losing it mm. but forget about clinical practice mm. like consciously forget, forget it, about it yeah. and give it up mm. that was one difficult choice that i made but oh. I, it was a conscious choice mm. now later i made a conscious choice not to be a great researcher but to be a great research leader mm. as i said it stopped being about me and getting more grants and mm. writing more papers mm. and you know getting more grants and writing more mm. papers mm. and i made the conscious choice that i think I'm, i'll better serve africa mm. by being a research leader who mm. mentors other people who mm. can become great researchers mm. or maybe become great research leaders who mentor researchers mm. because africa needs more research leaders now than mm. it needs great researchers mm. we need people who are going to nurture more mm. and more and more leaders mm. and then now 10 years from now those mm. leaders now will nurture the researchers, the researchers. Mm. who can become the great researchers who publish 200 papers and they win Nobel mm. prizes for mm. now we need leaders mm. to make that happen mm. <laughs> so mm. it was a, it was a, it was also a conscious choice to mm. say i need to stop mm. focusing more on my career as a yeah. researcher mm. and go into mm. leadership mm. and so i yeah i started working with young people and mm. researchers mm. and mm. it it becomes more and more it validates my choice when you see somebody finishes their phd they have 25 papers they get their first grant yeah then before you know it they are a mid level researcher before you know it a senior researcher i'm like i watched this person grow like yeah. from yeah you know yeah. pre phd now look at them they yeah. have a portfolio of 25 yeah. people yeah amazing yeah. so that's yeah. that's how during my parallel growth yeah i was busy leading a theme yeah but i was also now getting more into other leadership, things yeah uh, leadership understanding how institutions work yeah and um understanding the kind of sacrifices you have to make yeah and uh, and learning a lot <laughs> along and, the way yeah <coughs> and in that path of 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 learning and growing it um and raising mentoring many many leaders um uh, does i mean that came with the growth of an institution the growth mm-hmm. of APHRC so you're growing a lot more within the organization mm-hmm. um uh were there stage were there different stages of growth in the organization before you uh, we're, we're going to get to the point where you become ED mm-hmm. and what that has looked like and i want to hear all the <laughs> lessons of the ups and downs of a uh, I'm, I'm i'm not sure there's any typical day <laughs> but no. b- before that was what was the gap now between um leading the unit uh, not not even the unit leading the, the 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 health the health team and and the executive director I, i don't know how long that took yeah um it didn't take very long actually Oh, yeah. I grew very fast oh, honestly yeah. Yeah. I grew very fast mm. in the organizational mm. leadership mm. but then I think there's something I mentioned earlier where there are things which happen mm. and then you sort of self reflect on those things mm-hmm. and then you try to understand the significance of those things mm. and then you operationalize that significance mm-hmm. so when I became the theme leader that was the beginning of my leadership really. mm-hmm. and I after some time I was getting feedback that was telling me that I'm a strong leader and I'm a good leader. So it's to internalize what does that mean? What are the things that I'm doing that are making people say that I'm a good leader? Mm. And being really cautious of those things. Mm. I think there's a there's a term for it. 
and then working on them and like really being very intentional about strengthening mm. those things mm. and then now you get more feedback when mm. you're a strong leader mm. so being like present mm. to that feedback and alive to it mm. not let it some not, not let it like fly over your head and then it yeah. just yeah. goes and you don't um really reflect, reflect on, on it. it yeah and um and like harness whatever it is that is good it's being said yeah and is being said yeah so I mean I look I think I can look back and say I was able to have these moments of yeah. self reflection yeah. self um, yeah. awareness and yeah. self assessment yeah. and then trying to yeah. embrace yeah. those things what were, what were a few of those things for instance it's okay to <laughs> self reflect <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah I mean yeah. that's what I'm saying like um I I get feedback like oh you're a strong leader and then I'm like okay what am I doing right yeah what why do people say that yeah. and a lot of it was my my um ability to mentor people okay all right and creates processes and systems mm-hmm. there i mean i mean i can look back i can list the things that mm. i started in my team and mm. then later mm. they became mainstream mm. creating those processes and systems mm. and then finding out that they work mm. Mm. but i think earlier on in my leadership journey mm. i have like three phases mm. there was the early phase the, the middle phase and the current one mm-hmm.